Hey horse, welcome or welcome back to my channel and it's another Ho Tips with Holy. So I hope you're having a lovely, marvelous, and special tag of the day because the only things that matter here are you, me, your nuts, and the fact that nothing else really matters anyway, so we might as well have fun. And yeah, today's video is going to be about freeing the nip and why you should. So y'all voted for this as the first ho tips for when I came back because I had taken a break. Um, I've been going through family stuff and I had a lot of family birthdays and family events. Um, so I kind of took a break from ho tips and um, vlogs as well as story times. And I just wanted to kind of get y'all involved. And on Instagram, I had done a poll on which one y'all wanted me to do when I came back. I forgot the other options, but I know freeing the nip one. So we're getting a little educational today. And I'm going to break down the science behind bras and the history and all that. And how we got to where we are today, which is basically do whatever you want. Like, I personally, I am a 36 double D now or a 30 36 or a 38 double D and I personally haven't been wearing bras since I was like 19 I'm 24 um I don't like I get the whole thing of wearing them per se especially for girls with heavier boobs um and just like you know the way society has made us feel like we have to but I do not I do not have on a bra right now this is my WAP shirt I think I got like a stain on it, but this is my WAP shirt, and I often don't wear bras. I be wearing them at work, like recently, but never really fucked with them. But we'll get into all of that. Freedom's taking over. Take that shirt right off my shoulder. I just wanna free my titties, they just wanna be free. Break down the science. Now, according to um, my high school advisor, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but actually, my high school advisor um, was the first person that told me about like the effects potentially that bras can have on boobs over time. Um, shout out to Ms. Haynes. She was my high school advisor and my high school health and wellness teacher. She was the first person that told me like, why are y'all wearing bras like da, da, da. i don't feel like she used to wear bras i feel like she may have had like a smaller chest but either way um she was the first person that told me that and then when i did my research i came across this OBGYN. i am going to butcher their name i'm going to try really hard not to it's lucky but their last name is s-e-k-h-o-n i think it's second 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 I don't know, but there is an OBGYN <laughs> that um, says that there's a lot of research um, and data that supports the fact that um, wearing bras over time can make our tissue, like the muscle tissue and the natural way that our breasts are supposed to just be, it can break down because it's relying on, you know, the bras to hold them up. Um, so there's actually some science behind it. When I first looked it up, it seemed like it kind of went either way. Like, you know, people's preferences, it doesn't really matter. But when I looked deeper into it, I found out that there's actually data that supports the long-term effects um, can be kind of damaging. Um, one reason is just simply because of, you know, laxity and the natural way that they would you know shape and age and grow over time um another one is just it's it can be comfier over time as you start to not wear bras um when i looked it up it seems like some people have said that earlier on when they started not wearing bras it was uncomfortable because they had to get used to you know not having that extra support and um over time it became like more comfortable more natural i definitely feel like that because it's been like i said i've decided that 
that shit wasn't a thing when I was like 19 and I really like only recently started wearing them sometimes um, to go to work because my work shirt is really weird and uncomfortable. So other scientific reasons to free the nip is that there is, um, you know, sweats, bacteria, different things that build up throughout the day when you're wearing bras and, you know, over time as you wear them consistently. Um, and that can cause different, you know, skin irritation, sometimes like rashes and just overall can be negative for breast skin health. Um, and then another thing that I was looking at is that with your circulation, like just your overall blood circulation to your chest, your back, um, and like, you know, the area that covers your, your boobs, like your top half of your torso, um, all of that circulation can be pent up when we're wearing bras and I know a lot of us feel very restricted and um, especially because a lot of people that wear bras are usually wearing the wrong sizes. Like I remember being really young when Oprah was still on and they did like a whole thing. Like I feel like multiple talk show hosts have had like a whole thing on bras and how multiple people, like multiple different generations have a misconception of what their actual size is um and like being inaccurately measured and stuff like that um but yeah so over time um it can be bad for circulation and it can be better for your circulation to go braless so jumping into the history the first patented bra was made in 1914 so i assumed that it was like the 20s but it was a little bit before that and basically there was a metal ban um or not a metal ban there was a corset ban because of the metal usage that it takes to build corsets or that it took to build corsets for women back then um and basically the ban was so that they could support the war um, the World War, I believe both of them, um, during both of them, there was like a ban on corsets. And so when women realized that um, they couldn't have that support, I'm pretty sure, or I'm not sure, cause obviously I wasn't there. Um, but I feel like it was um, like a freeing thing for them to not have to wear like full shapewear everywhere. But then some of them came up with um, like a full coverage, you know, mechanism that wasn't you know heavily metal based and so the first patent was in 1914 even though we assume that they were making um bras out of i believe wool back in greece in ancient greece um but the first patented one was in 1914 and then after that um it was kind of a general you know one size fits all thing going on and then they took off in the 20s and 30s so people were kind of making them out of all kinds of different things the first sports bra was actually made out of two jock straps which i thought was very interesting i'm like was that the one that men came up with because i was honestly surprised that the first patented one was I believe created by a woman because i always assume that all the bad things that have been made for us are made by men um but yeah so it took off um in the 20s and 30s and then the system of a b c d etc was born um after that i feel like it kind of became a toss-up like into the 50s and 60s and 70s um obviously going into the hippie movement no one really wanted to do anything that was like holding them back or stopping them from being free which is what i believe um i'm very much a black hippie and what else um oh today in western west in the western world 95 percent of women wear bras um which i feel like is so sad like free that thing free them things i that you just need some air and everyone can just suck a dick and stop pretending like they've never seen titties before but we will get there so today we're obviously in the midst of the free the nip movement um for all different kinds of reasons i feel like there's a lot of celebrities that have been over very much covering up their boobs for anyone um 
I think it's become a staple in um, pop culture and fashion culture um, just to kind of embrace the nip and free it. Um, and I think that that is kind of a luxury that we have in our generation and kind of moving forward because um, obviously we're becoming more liberated with how we're able to express ourselves, you know, in general. Um, but I remember being a teenager and like seeing that there are literally like laws and um you know rules set in place that really just put the blame on young people that have boobs a lot of the time like um things regarding school uniforms and how we are allowed to dress as opposed to boys um and I always thought that it was so stupid that like just because my chest happens to be a little bit puffier I have to be clothed all the time like what if I'm hot too what if I need some air too like if it's summertime why can't I also be free you know like the boys be on the basketball all just glistening just free as a bird I don't understand so now we have not only a movement but also the girls are coming up with all kinds of hacks honey so we're going to head into different tips and i have some videos and things for y'all but before that i want to make a psa all of us are able and um or not all of us are able but if you are able to um do at home breast exams please do so um i will try to remember to link either an infographic or a video on how to do at home breast exams um but it's really just about knowing your body um and doing them frequently enough that you can notice if something is different or out of place or strange going on up in there um and it also doesn't just go for like your boobs there's also like your underarms and um, places that you can feel in a special way that you do it like a circular motion um, but yeah so PSA because we're talking about boobs make sure that you are staying healthy if you're at a place where you should be getting what are they called what are they called what are they called breast exams I forgot it's it's slipping my mind right now what the technical term is for it but um, if you are at a point where you need to be getting breast exams, I believe once you start, you're supposed to be getting them once a year, but I don't know how old you're supposed to, supposed to be before you start getting them. Um, but we know that the medical system is against black women. So if you're black and you have titties, um, please, please check on yourself. Stay up to date with your doctor's exams and those things but yeah so we're gonna go into tips now roll the clips never would know change the summer months we just call we don't we don't break the call we, we just make the call these are reusable nipple covers so whenever i don't feel like wearing a bra and i want this situation taken care of i use super easy to use i just take them on and stick them on like this boom See my tops that you thought you couldn't wear? I have a bra hack that's going to change your life. Let me show you how to go from this to this. Grab yourself a simple, non-wired, stretchy sports bra and put on that top you thought you could never wear. Take your strings and you want to put one through your bra going down and one through your bra going up. If you only have one tie and it's in the center of your top, then you're pretty much good to go. But I have two. So what you want to do in this case, the top two go down and under and the bottom two go up and under. So you should have a set of strings on either side. Now, oh, yeah, uh-huh. All that's left is to make a fancy bow. Yeah pretty life-changing you get so much support they're sitting right oh, so cute 
So I feel like today's ideology is basically just that we are in charge of our own bodies, very much so between the Me Too movement, which was obviously a huge impact on how we are able to stand up for ourselves and um, be in charge and reclaim what is ours. And um, I think that the whole idea of like slut shaming, which also goes into victim blaming um, in relation to the Me Too movement, it has kind of all been, although traumatizing and stressful to watch sometimes as a survivor, um, I think that, at least for me, I feel more empowered to just, like, do whatever it is that I want because I feel, especially in regards to how I dress and how I um, portray myself, I guess, or put myself out there outside, um, because I feel like, you know, the ignorance is going to be there and it has been there and this idea that we need to be like pent up and wear bras and back in the day wear corsets like it's it's been there but um I feel like if I feel my most free or if I feel my best with pasties and a mini skirt on then that's what I should be doing um and so I think that you know as far as today with feminism and even greater womanism um, it's very much everyone's choice, and I think a lot of us are choosing to um, free ourselves in a lot of different ways, and one of them is how we dress and how we choose to free our chests. And um, I think also being queer has a lot to do with it because it's like, why should I feel bad for you sexualizing me? I'm just a person. Like, I'm gender fluid as fuck. You don't know what the fuck's going on today. Like... I feel like, yeah, I'm rambling, but I feel like our generation and today's mindset is kind of just like, be who you are, do, be who you are, do what you want to do. I'm not minding your business if you're not minding mine. Honestly, anytime I have a problem having my titties out outside, it'd be some old ass man that thinks he's entitled to stare at me. Everybody else be minding their business, especially when I'm at Pride. So that's that on that. So now that we went over the science behind playing the nip and how good it can be overall for your health, breast, skin, all of those things, and the history kind of to how we got here, um, and then a little bit on tips if you want to, you know, stay comfy and cozy outside without having your boobies flailing all over the place. I am personally a big pasties fan now. I think I'm going to run the summer with pasties this summer Um, because my goal is to be more naked at every pride each year and I've been going since I was like 15, 16. Um, I want to take my little sisters this year but that's not going to stop me from dressing like a whore. Um, They know who I am and yeah so I hope y'all enjoyed this. I hope that y'all got something from the tips that I dropped. Those are my faves. Um, and we're taking over the summer. We're taking over the summer. It's it's city girls are up ten thousand um, because of whole tips, obviously. And yeah, I hope y'all feel prepared. I hope y'all feel inspired and able to get with the movement because I mean, why not? Like. Rihanna said free the nip. I'm pretty sure Beyonce is free the nip at some point. Janelle Monae has been free the nip all over the place. Um, I just feel like we should get behind them and do what needs to be done. So let's get it girls. Bye horse. <laughs>